Hi, in this video, I want to talk to you about the project internal rate of return. Okay, so in this session, we're going to talk about the project IRR, and these are the topics that we're going to cover. First of all, we're going to talk about what is project IRR. Then we're going to look at the definition of the project or IRR in the context of a project finance structure. And then we're going to see the relationship between project IRR, equity IRR, and debt IRR. And finally, we're going to look at the different types of project IRR. And I'm going to walk you through a financial model and show you how to incorporate a project IRR in your financial models. But before we get into that, uh, for those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Hedie. I made financial modeling my profession as well as my passion. My aim here is to make you a pro yourself or just simply better at financial modeling. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. So now we're going to answer the first question, which, which is, what is project IRR? So when somebody is talking about the project IRR, if you're in a meeting and somebody is presenting to you the metrics, project metrics, and they talk about project IRR being this and being that, it is worth asking the question, what do you mean by project IRR? Because so many times I saw that people, they talk about project IRR, but they, they were actually talking about the equity IRR, which we covered in the previous video. Uh, so it is always worth asking the question, what do you mean by project IRR? And later in this video, I'm going to also talk to you about the different types of project IRR, post and pre-tax project IRR. So as I said, you need to ask the question about what they mean by project IRR. Okay. So however, a project IRR is an internal rate of return for a cash flow before financing. That means that in a cash flow waterfall, you have a line which is a cash flow before financing, which is basically the operating cash flows. It's basically your EBITDA, okay? Uh, however, EBITDA, which is taking into account the capex, the construction cost. So that line, which is not affected by financing, meaning that it doesn't contain any financing costs like interest or interest during construction, interest during operation, if it is deductible. So all this should be uh, removed from this definition of project IRR. And we want to look at the return before financing. So that's the definition of project IRR. It also has some other names, like it's also called like unleveraged IRR or project unleveraged IRR. So you might ask yourself the question, in the context of a project finance structure, which the whole point is to raise debts of balance sheet of a corporation, what's the use of calculating the project IRR, which assumes no debt financing? The reason is mainly because uh, sometimes for reporting purposes, people are used to see some metrics, so you want to show it to them. And then if you are at the early stage in the development stage, which you're still not sure about the financing structure, maybe it's a good metrics to cal calculate, it's a good metric to calculate, because it's going to tell you um, what is the uh, impact of financing. So before financing and after financing, equity IRR, debt IRR, and the project IRR, which is the before financing, you can calculate the three of these metrics and then compare them. Here I tell you about the example of a um, uh, solar project, which usually, you know, projects, I mean, I'm talking about solar because that's something that I'm familiar with, but projects which have like a um, short period of time for construction and for financing, usually you might want to consider the case where you are just funding it with uh, equity, 100% equity, and then post construction, you refinance it. So that's something that uh, maybe you want to consider as well. As I said, it's only for projects maybe which has short period of time for construction. And so that metric might be useful for the, those purposes. So the next question is, what is the relationship between the equity IRR, project IRR and debt IRR? So in the previous blog post and video, I talked to you about the uh, 
equity IRR, the different types of equity IRRs and what the equity IRR means. And I showed you as well in a financial model how to calculate the different types of equity IRR and their definition and interpretation. And there is also a, a template, a simple template extracted from a real project finance model, which show you these different types of equity IRR. Okay, but today we are talking about uh, project IRR and what's the relationship between project IRR, equity IRR, and cost of debt. So we know that if the project is funded with 100% equity, then the project IRR will be almost equal to equity IRR. I say almost because um, there might be also some financing cost attached to the equity funding. For example, if your project is situated in a risky environment, a risky country, then uh, the investors, they might go and get some insurance premiums, insurance uh, products. So these insurance like the PRI, political risk insurance, they come at a cost. And so you need to remove that cost when you're calculating your project IRR. However, as we said, if the project is funded with 100% equity, then the project IRR will be almost equal to equity IRR. If, on the other hand, the cost of debt is less than the project IRR, then equity IRR will be greater than project IRR. As, okay, so that's basically the whole purpose of having a project finance structure is because when you raise debt, then the equity IRR will improve okay and as you increase the leverage the equity irr will also improve if on the other hand the cost of debt is greater than the project irr then the equity irr will be less than project irr and if you ask me if i have come across such a project yes however there are solutions so if you see that the um, debt is high you know the the cost of debt is high the interest in that country because it's a risky country so there is a 11 percent interest on a debt and the maturity is like short then you see that debt financing is not suitable for this transaction then there are still ways to kind of remedy for example is to uh, go and look for a tranche of concessional financing which comes at a lower cost and with a higher maturity or even a grant you know just to finance the some uh, to cover some of the cost of the debt um some of the cost of the financing okay with a grant or just uh, just as i told you in the previous example of financing the construction phase with equity and then when once the project is de-risked de during construction then during operation you can go and refinancing with debt so as we said you know as you can see here if you come across a case where the cost of debt is high you still can remedy it by finding some different uh, financing instruments, okay, or even different structures. Now, the last topic is uh, regarding the different types of project IRR. So I'm going to introduce you to two concepts, pre-tax project IRR and post-tax project IRR. First, I'm going to tell you the definition and then we're going to get into the financial model and we're going to do some calculations together. So the pre-tax project IRR, as the name says, it's just basically in a cash flow waterfall, you just take your revenue line and you deduct the operating expenses, major maintenance and any other non-financing costs you deduct it and you get to this line called cash flow before financing. And this will be just the base for calculating the pre-tax project IRR. So when it comes to post-tax project IRR, you might tell me that, okay, so that's the same definition. Yeah, I just need to deduct taxes which is a little bit more complicated than that. And that's because taxes are influenced by financing costs. So if you have a project which you have a 70%, 80% um, uh, debt financing in that model, you cannot just take all these um, cash flow before financing, deduct taxes and get into the, and calculate the project post IRR, post tax IRR. So, you need to basically, um, I'm going to show you when, you when we go into the model, you just need to basically remove the impact of financing from your tax calculation. So for example, if interest is deductible, when you get the base for calculating the corporate income tax, you need to remove those taxes. Or if you have all the financing costs during construction, which are included in your depreciation, uh, then you also need to remove it from the PNL. So once you do that, then you get the real definition of post-tax project IRR. 
Okay, now let's look at the financial model. I'm going to use the financial model, the same financial model I used to show you the different um, equity IRR calculation. So we created a worksheet called IRR, which contains all the different types of equity IRR calculation. And I'm going to add the section for the unleveraged project IRR here. Okay, so let's start with the pre-tax project IRR. So we explained in the definition that the pre-tax project IRR is basically the revenues minus all sort of operating expenses and construction costs, excluding financing costs, okay? So that's gonna be the base for calculating the um, project IRR, pre-tax project IRR, okay? So what I need to do here is to basically use this line in my cash flow waterfall as the base for calculating the project IRR. So if you have the generic macro open is shift control R, okay? And so you take the IRR of this line of this cash flow and this is gonna give you the project IRR before tax. So this is zero because the first um, figure, the first figure in the IRR calculation is zero and that's why. So if it is, if this was, if I am gonna do it manually now, but I'm gonna remove it. If I just say minus a very small number, you see that that's the true IRR, which is 11.6%, okay? But since I am, I don't wanna hard code anything in my formulas, I need to create a very simple formula. So I'm gonna say if, and I'm gonna open an and. You can do it in a number of different ways. This is just my way of doing. So I say if the IFS, if that line is equal to zero and it's the first period, I have a model counter. You see here the model counter, if this is, equal to one, then um, put a very small number, okay? So I, I even have it as a named range, I guess. I think I call it epsilon. So I'm gonna call it epsilon, yes, so I have it. Epsilon is a very small number. I defined it in my input sheet. If not, then just put the, the figure, okay? So that's gonna do the trick, and this is gonna give me a very small number just for the first period and then that's gonna solve the problem, okay? So the, we are done with the pre-tax project IRR. Now let's do the post-tax project IRR, which is a little bit more complicated. Okay, for post-tax project IRR, as I told you in the theory section, we need to do the adjustments on the taxes. So we need to basically recalculate taxes for the purpose of calculating the project IRR. Let's do it together. So first of all, we know that the base for calculating the corporate income tax is EBIT, earning before um, interest and taxes, right? So we start with EBITDA and we're gonna use the right definition of depreciation, okay? By right, I mean a depreciation which doesn't include any financing. So I'm gonna first uh, link the EBITDA from my uh, profit and loss statement in my balance sheet. Then I'm gonna, so that's done. Then I'm gonna, sorry about that. So then I'm gonna find the depreciation expenses. I should have a worksheet called taxes, taxes and depreciation, that's how I call it. So that line, which is the whole depreciation, everything, including financing, including interest during construction, commitment fee, financing fee, pre-funding of that, so all of them are included in this uh, definition of depreciation. In order to do the adjustment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add back the financing, depreciation of uh, financing costs, okay? I should have it as a separate line because sometimes the tax life of the different type of assets are different and financing assets sometimes are shorter. So I do them separately and it's gonna help me as well when I do the calculation of the project IRR. So once I did all the links, so I shift control R if you have the generic macro open, and it's gonna give you the, um, the line that you need the base for calculating your taxes, which is your EBIT. The last thing that you need to do is to, to take care of losses. You know that if you have a loss, you don't pay taxes, right? That's logical. So, however, there is a limit for the uh, uh, carrying forward your losses. So you need to check in the tax regulation for how many years you can basically um, uh, carry forward your losses. So you need to do the adjustment as well. So for example, in this case, as you can see here, in this model, 
I have, um, for example, in this year, I have these losses. As you see, they are negative cash flows. Uh, sorry, I think you don't see the whole picture. So I need to freeze it. Uh, just give me one moment. I'm going to um, I'm going to freeze the column so that I can show you exactly how it works. I'm going to be back. OK, sorry, I'm back. I just get nervous. So um, so as you can see here, the EBIT in the definition of EBIT, we have these negative, negative profits before tax. So we need to carry them forward and use them uh, for um, adjusting the EBIT. OK, so this is done here. As you can see in this calculation block, that's what we do. We identify the tax losses, meaning that when this is negative, we're going to include it here in the balance. And if we use it, we're going to deduct it. So up to here in year June 2029, in this model, we have only accrued losses. And as we carry forward, we have like this is semi annual, if I'm mistaken. Yes. Yeah, so for two years, let me sorry, you don't see it. So you see for these two years, uh, you are using your um, um, losses, you're carrying them forward and you use them against your uh, taxes. So you don't pay taxes because you are carrying forward the losses and then you start paying taxes afterwards. OK, so these are the adjustments that you need to do on the model before you calculate your project IRR and then you get to this line. OK, so which is the um, the EBIT adjusted for tax losses. And that's going to be your base for calculating the IRR. And as it is uh, obvious, the after-tax project IRR is less than the um, pre-tax project IRR. And if we look at the equity IRR in this project, the equity IRR is 17%. This is blended equity IRR. And um, this is, so as you can see, there is a huge advantage of uh, having debts. Uh, let me show you how much is debt is priced. Um, the I have two tranches of debt. Both of them, they are at 5%. So you have an interest of 5%. And you have the pre-tax project IRR of 11.6%, post 98 and an equity IRR of 17%. So having this 70% debt has considerably improved the economics or the return of the investors. OK, so you can see it here. And these are the metrics that you can calculate in your model and make sure that if you're calculating the post tax project IRR, you do this adjustment that I just mentioned here. So that's it for me now. I hope you like this video. You could use this video for when you're building your own financial models. And if you have any feedbacks or comment on this topic, or if you have any recommendation on future topics, please let me know. That's it for me. And I hope to see you next time. If you want to learn how to build better financial models, check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com.